Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I want to share with you my swift solution to this very popular interview question. So as you can see over here, uh, I'm on lead code and this question is called number of islands and the difficulty is medium. So I want to go through with you uh, what the question is and also the solution and uh, the thought process, okay? And I'm going to do this all in Swift, okay? Because I'm an iOS developer, so obviously I'm going to use uh, Swift to answer this uh, problem. Okay, so let's go through the uh, question. So given a 2D binary grid, okay, over here, as you can see, uh, which represents a map of ones and zero, all right? So one represents land and zero represents water, okay? Uh, this island is surrounded by water, so we can assume that all the uh, areas that's outside of this grid is going to be zero. And land, or, or rather an island, is surrounded by uh, the number of ones that are formed uh, adjacent horizontally or vertically, okay? So uh, you may assume that all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water, okay? We have talked about that. So as you can see over here in example number one, a uh, one, 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 one over here. So this is a piece of land and it's also connected uh, to this one over here this one over here and this one over here. So as you can see this, uh, these are all the water, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. <laughs> all right, so the output is one, okay? And example number two, we have uh, the output is three because we have three islands over here. So the first island is this one, okay? So this square piece over here, we have a solo guy over here. So this is uh, one island as well. And finally, we have the third island over here. Okay, so we are going to uh, come up with a solution uh, to calculate how many islands are there uh, when we input a grid or rather a 2D array, okay? So we know that this is a 2D array because we see two square uh, opening brackets. So you can imagine this is the X axis and this is the Y axis, okay? So over here, um, if you look over here, uh, it gives us kind of a template to how to answer this question. So I'm just going to copy this. And then just open up one of my uh, x uh, sorry my my island. I've already prepared this empty uh, playground over here, so I'm just gonna paste this in over here. Okay, I'm gonna comment this out because I'm just gonna use this uh, as reference. Okay, so now I want to use these two examples that are being uh, given to us. So let me just copy this so I know that the, the output is supposed to be one. Okay, so. Let's. Uh, this is a grid, and I'm going to represent this by the data type, which is which is a nested integer, and I'm going to call this let grid uh, underscore one. Okay, and the reason is because we're only expecting a one. Uh, oops, sorry, my bad, guys. <laughs> this will be a string. Uh, we're only expecting one island over here. Okay, so we are only expecting one island. Oops, uh, island, and then let's have the second grid. So let me just bring this back and. I'm just going to copy this and put this inside my playground. Okay, so uh, let, let uh, grid three, okay, because we're expecting three islands. So three islands, and then this will be a nested array of string, okay? All right, guys, so we have the solution over here, and then I'm going to just write this in Swift. Okay, so class, we have the solution. And then this is called, uh, this is, uh, the function name is number of islands. So I'm going to do func uh, number of islands. Okay, and then this uh, function is going to return to us something. So we know that uh, this should return to us an integer because we're expecting an integer result, all right? So I'm going to do it this way. And in the meantime, I'm just going to return zero so that Xcode doesn't complain. And we have to take in some parameters over here. Okay, so we're going to take in a grid and this grid will have this data type okay so guys i hope that this is easy to understand um all right so what we are going to do is that we have to traverse all the different elements inside this grid okay so we have to go through all the different elements and check if they are islands so for example this uh this uh, array it will be zero 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 one zero two zero three zero four 
and then this will be one zero uh, one 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 two one three one four. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, Alright, so as you can see, this is a nested string array. So if you have worked with a table view before and if you have multiple sections, I think this will be very familiar to you. Okay, so you can imagine this is section uh section one, section two, section three, and section four of a table view. Okay, so these are all the uh let's assume that these are all the data structure or the data type that you're going to use to populate your table view cell. Okay, so this is just an analogy. Alright guys, so we're going to traverse through all the different elements over here and I'm going to use X and Y uh, so that we, uh, this, which is familiar to us. So X will always be the, um, X will always be the, uh, the, hor uh, the horizontal axis and Y will be the vertical axis, okay? So I'm going to do um, for X in zero uh, grid dot count. Okay, so we know that there are how many elements over here? Zero, one, two, three. Uh, all right, we have four elements over here, all right, but the, the index starts from zero. So we have four elements over here. And then I'm gonna do Y as well. So I'm gonna go through each and one of these uh, sections, okay? So Y in zero grid x dot count. All right, so I'm going to just print this out in case you are still confused what this means. So grid, I'm going to do X and I'm gonna do Y over here. All right, so in order for me to print this out onto the console, I have to uh, ignite or rather call this uh, function over here, okay? It doesn't matter that it returns zero because I've not yet implemented the solution, but I just want to see what it prints out over here on line 25, okay? So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do let result equals to solution, okay? So since this is a class, I have to initialize this. And then I'm going to call this a number of islands uh, function and I'm going to pass in a grid. So let's pass in maybe grid number one. So let's just copy this and paste over here. Okay, so I'm just going to run this and let's see what X code returns to us, okay? All right, so we see something over here. So let me just bring this up. So as you can tell, one, 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 one. So there are four ones over here followed by a zero. So we see this one, 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 zero. And then we get two ones over here followed by a zero and then one zero over here, which is this two elements over here. All right, so I hope that you understand what we are doing over here. So we're just looping through all the elements inside. Okay, so very simply, I'm going to get, I'm going to call, I'm uh, sorry, I'm going to create a variable over here. Let's call this a point. So a point will be an element, okay? So I'm going to say uh, this point will be X and Y. Okay, so I'm going to check if, Check if this is an island. So how are we gonna do that? We know that an island is represented by the uh, by the string one, all right, and zero represents uh, a water, all right. So I'm gonna check if point equals to one. Okay, so we know that. Oops, let me just get rid of this. We know that this is an island. Okay, so what I'm gonna do over here is that I'm gonna have a uh, a variable over here. So call let's call this island cow. And this will be an integer, uh, which is uh, zero uh, for the time being. And every time we check if a point is an island, I'm just going to add this. I'm going, I'm going to increment this, okay? So guys, I hope that this is easy to understand. Uh, but of course, this is not the solution because if we are going to do it this way, then uh, this will be an island, this will be an island. All right, and this will be an island, uh, and this will be an island, which is not what we want because as long as they are connecting uh, uh, vertically or horizontally, this is considered as a piece of island. All right, so we're not got, we, we have to make sure that uh, if we see an element uh, which is an island, we have to ensure that the top left and the right or the bottom, if it's also one, we have to count that as part of the island as well. Okay, so I think the question will be how are we going to do that? All right, so. Uh, you can take some time to pause this video and have a think uh, and, and think about how, how we're going to do this. But of course, I'm going to give you the solution over here. All right. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to check uh, using something called that first search to check to traverse across all the elements and check. Okay, so let's assume uh, this one over here. Okay, so we know that this is an island. We have to look on the left, the top. The, uh, sorry, the left, the top, the right, and the bottom to check if the element next to it is an island. And if it is, we want to do the same, okay, to the top, left, uh, bottom, and right, okay? So let's assume that, okay, we know that the second element is an island, so we want to check on the right again to see if this is an island, and we want to check the top again to see if this is an island or not, okay? And if we know that the top uh, or the left or the right or the bottom is an island, we want to destroy 
the island, so to speak. Okay, it's a bit hard to con uh, conceptualize now. I kind of understand, but I think when I uh, show you my solution, it'll be a lot easier to, to, to comprehend. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to create a private function at the bottom over here. Okay, so let's ensure that we are writing outside of this uh, curly braces. So I'm going to call this depth first search. All right, so if you are a computer science student, this will be familiar to you. Otherwise, you can just check out what depth first search means. Uh, I think it's depth first search. All right, so I'm going to uh, call this destroy island. Okay, so how are we going to destroy this island? Okay, again, as I mentioned, we have to look uh, from the top, left, right, and the bottom to check if those are island as well. And if they are, let's destroy them. Okay, so we're going to take in an X, uh, a Y, as well as the grid. Okay, so the grid will be a string array, string uh, nested string array. And because I want to destroy this, I need the grid to be mutable, all right? So as you can see over here, when this grid is being passed down here, this grid is not mutable. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a mutable grid over here. So it's going to have the same signature, which is like that. And then I think uh, this is just an empty array over here, okay? So what's going to happen is that when I call this function number of islands, I'm going to say that... Uh, uh, mutable grid equals to grid, just like that. So we're, we're just going to work with the mutable grid, okay? So I'm just going to just copy this like that over here, okay? And then uh, I also want to do some kind of error checking. So I'm going to do, uh, let's call this error checking. So I'm going to do guard grid is empty, is not empty, okay? So I want to make sure that the grid is not empty, uh, else I'm just going to return zero. Okay, so guys, I hope that this is understand. So we want to only execute this code if the array is not empty. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here is that uh, I am going to, uh, since I want to destroy this island, right? So I have to do mutable greed. Okay, X and Y, I want to set this to be zero. All right, guys, so I hope that this is easy to understand. And then I, I need to be able to destroy destroy the, the top, destroy the bottom, destroy the left, and destroy the right elements, okay, on the particular point itself, okay. So how, how am I going to do that? Okay, I'm going to use something called recursion. So let's, let's try to understand what does top means, okay. So we know that this, this represents uh, x and y, right, so x will be 0, y will be 0. Uh, x will be 0, y, oh sorry, uh, x will be, um, sorry, let me see, x will be uh, 1, while y will be 0, okay? So in order for me to uh, to to uh, represent the element on the right, the x-axis I have to increase by 1, and the y-axis, oh sorry, on the left, the x-axis I have to decrease by 1, okay? <clears throat> so in the same way, uh, the bottom one, I have to increase the y-axis by 1, and the top, I have to uh, uh, decrease the y-axis by one. Okay, so this is how we're gonna uh, get the positions of the elements. Okay, so I'm gonna do it this way. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do uh, DFS destroy island. So the x-axis, I have to, uh, I have to. Let me do it this way. So y, I have to plus one. Okay, x-axis, x-axis is gonna remain, and then the grid, I'm gonna pass in the mutable grid over here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. So for the bottom, the y-axis, I have to do negative 1. Oops. Okay, and the left, I have to do x minus 1. Like that. And then on the right, it will be x plus 1. Alright guys, I hope that this is easy to understand. Okay, is this correct? Let me see, uh, X, Y, I think this should be fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that if I'm gonna run this right now, I'm definitely gonna get into some kind of error, uh, you know, some out of bound uh, array error. And the reason is because if I am on my first element and if I'm going to do X minus one, uh, there is no element because this is the first one. So I'm gonna get into some kind of uh, uh, out of bound kind of error. So what I'm gonna do is that I have to uh, do some kind of checking, okay? So I have to check the out of bounds. 
So I'm going to do guard uh, grid dot indices dot contains uh, x. Okay, and then I'm going to do um, uh, grid <coughs> x indices contains y. Okay, else return. And also, I want to make sure that this particular point itself must be an island. Otherwise, there's no point running this over here, okay? So I'm going to do a grid x and y equals to 1. All right, like that. Okay, so I'm going to just break this down. So this should work. Okay, so once I increment the island count, I want to destroy the rest of the other islands. Okay, not destroy the rest of the islands, but rather destroy the connecting uh, ones. Okay, so I'm going to pass in the X. I'm going to pass in the Y. And I'm going to pass in the mutable grid over here. Okay, so let me just indent this correctly. All right, guys, so let's see if this is working for us. All right, so let me just quickly run this solution over here. And I believe I should get zero. Am I getting that? Let's see. Oh, I've not, I've not printed that out yet. So result. Am I getting zero? Okay, so this is a problem because I'm not expecting to get zero over here. So let me see what's the problem over here. Um, <clears throat> oh, guys, my bad, <laughs> because I'm returning zero over here. So I need to return the island count over here. So let's just run this one more time. Okay, so I'm getting one. So if I'm to pass in greed three, I will get uh, three, I believe. Okay, so if we want to modify this, so let's let's just copy this, and let's just call this grid X, and then we can just uh, you know create our own islands over here. So maybe let's have this as five. So I'm going to make this uh, one island over here, and then I'm going to make this as another island over here. All right, so we have one. So one, two, three, four. This is one piece. This is one piece, this is one piece, this is one piece, and this is one piece over here. All right, so uh, maybe let's call this grid five, and let's just paste this all the way at the bottom, and let's see if this is working for us. All right, guys, so we are getting the correct result. All right, guys, I hope that you are able to understand this. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments uh, section below. So going forward, I'll be doing more of such interview questions, uh, sorry, su more of such uh, lead code questions because I find them quite challenging and quite interesting to be uh, frankly. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.